Hello, I'm Lee from the blog, thelittlebylittlehome.com, and today is an exciting day. It is the reveal of our basement staircase makeover. I participated in the $100 room challenge where we had four weeks and $100 to make over a space, and I chose our basement staircase makeover. If you missed the before and all the reasons for why I chose this space, you can go back to my first video, and I will link that in the description below. Now, I'm going to tell you that in the beginning, I thought this is going to be a lame makeover. I was a little embarrassed to share it, but as the weeks have gone by and now this final week, I am saying to myself, I'm so glad I did this space. However, I should add the, like, the little disclaimer, the caveat that James said the other day, I showed him a sneak peek when it was just about done. And he said, I feel like you're going to give the people the wrong impression when they come to our home because they're going to open up the door. I mean, not really many people go down their basement, but anybody who does is going to open up the door and they're going to be like, wow, this is gonna be an amazing basement. And then they're gonna to get to the bottom of the stairs and be like, this is not an amazing basement. <laughs> I was like, well, you know what? You fake it till you make it. And whenever the door's open, it looks really nice. And our staircase turns, it has a curve there. So I don't have to look at the bottom of the stairs when the door is open. Because our basement staircase is actually off of our kitchen and we use it quite often. So let's take a look at what we accomplished this final week. James completed the sheetrock and all of the spackling for that space and I was able to prime it and paint it and it feels really nice that once you make that turn for our staircase, you don't automatically see the basement for at least a couple more steps. It actually makes the staircase feel a bit more complete. Once the sheetrock was done and all the spackling and the painting and all that was dry, I looked at it and I just thought, hmm. It's great, it looks fantastic, it looks super clean and fresh, but I'm gonna take you that extra step. And so I kind of went to be, I took it a little, a little bit further than it probably needs to be her basement staircase. And I enlisted the help of my daughter. She is fantastic and artistic, and I showed her a design of a stencil that I really liked, and she recreated it freehand. I knew that I wanted to add some color to the space, something unexpected, something a little bit different that when you open the door, again, you wouldn't expect to see like a faux wallpaper. I've removed enough real wallpaper in my life that I cannot bring myself to actually put permanent wallpaper up. Or I can get myself to put up removable wallpaper and I've done that before and it's so fun to put up and really simple to take down. However, this makeover had a budget of $100 and anything like that was gonna be way over the budget. While we were working on the staircase, we took down the banister. And in the meantime, while that work was being done, I cleaned up the banister, gave it a fresh coat of stain and I even uh, spray painted the hardware black. And so we put that back up once the stencil wall was complete. We did hang up that peg rack again, the one that I had painted last week. If you missed that, I will list that video in the description below. Hung that back up and I decided that the vacuum that was originally there, I decided to pass on to somebody else because I haven't used it in a long time. In its place, I just put a, um, a small dustpan and a small dust broom just to clean up any messes that are on the staircase. When it came to organization of our basement staircase, I went through everything that was in that space took out anything that we really don't need there. And then I started to go through my kitchen a little bit and my junk drawers and just different areas and decided to put some things there that would be more helpful in that area instead. I found two small bins at Target that fit on the six inch boards, as well as a basket from our homeschool area that'll fit on it as well. I decided to fill up one of them with different uh, tools, screwdrivers. I actually have to get a hammer and put it in there. That's one thing that's missing. Nails, just a couple of little minor home improvement tools that we use often and don't wanna have to go all the way down to the basement to get those. And the other one, I put different glues and just different kind of stuff that we will use around the house. Again, saving a trip to go down to the basement. The other basket, I put just uh, light bulbs, little box that has all of my cleaning supplies for our Berkey water system. If you're not familiar with that, I will link that in the description below. But then basically anything that I kind of felt that would be useful in our home, uh, in our kitchen, on our first floor or second floor, but don't wanna to have to go all the way down to the basement, put in that space as well. 
The very last part of this project included painting the actual stairs. I know I have said all along to just ignore how awful they looked and that I promised at the end they would no longer look like that. And I am excited to show you what they look like now. The process of painting stairs is something that I have done before. There is actually a post that I did about another staircase that I painted this exact same color. So I was able to use the paint that I already had and paint this staircase. I will link that original blog post in my uh, description below. So when it comes to painting a staircase, it can be difficult because you need to use that staircase. First thing I did was to prime it. Now primer is amazing because it dries within one hour. That was really the simple part. And I'll show you the process here. I will leave every other step unpainted just so I can sneak up. I will paint the risers, everything the very first time. So in an hour, the primer is done painting. Make sure you follow the directions on your primer. But mine said that within an hour, I, it would be dry. That meant that I could sneak back down the stairs and I could go through and paint the actual step that I had missed, that I had purposely skipped the first time. Once that was dry, within a few hours, I was able to go back and to paint it with the actual paint color. I'm so excited about this color. I did the same exact process, painted as much as I could and just left one step, just the top of the step, unpainted so I could sneak back up. Now when it comes to the floor and deck paint, it does need longer to uh, dry. So I did give it that, that amount of time and then I went through and painted just the top step that was missing and then gave it a lot more time. The best thing to do would be when you are doing the final coat to do it in the evening after everybody's gone to bed, go ahead and get that done and then get yourself to bed and then it should be dry by the morning just for light use. For now, we are only walking in socks on our steps. It takes a few days to cure and it actually takes 30 days to be fully set. So make sure you follow the directions on your exact paint. One last item that we added to the space is purely nostalgic and it is a slate chalkboard. Our staircase reminds me of my grandparents' home. It just brings back a lot of memories. Many years ago, my mom gave me this chalkboard and it has been in a couple of our different homes. And in this home, I just hadn't quite found the right space. And when I decided to do our basement staircase, give it a makeover, I knew this was gonna go in this space because it'll just be kind of something fun that we can, as a family, leave notes and messages for one another. This completes our $100 room challenge, and I am so excited about the space. I wanna encourage you to just take a look at different spaces in your home and realize that it doesn't have to be done on a big budget, and I hope that this has encouraged you to do so. Use the items that you have and um, be really intentional about how you spend that $100 and you should end up with a space that you really love. Again, thank you for following along. If you missed any of the videos, there was a before, there was a week one and a week two progress of work if you'd like to take a look at the different stages. And so I thank you for stopping by and taking a look at this reveal today. I would absolutely love it if you would hit that like button, subscribe, and you can find more information about me and my blog and just different projects that I have going on at thelittlebylittlehome.com. Thanks and have a great day.